So these are Simon's storyboard drawings. Um, he does them for every scene and they're done traditionally, drawn on paper. So we have to scan them in. I give it a bit of a clean up and um, then we are ready to bring them into the animatic. I bring them into TV paint. We add these notes to each storyboard panel so um, the team knows what's happening in each shot. This stage is really quite exciting because you can really see Simon's drawings come to life and you can see the action that will actually make it to the film. So this is the animatic for one of the first scenes I'm working on, uh, quite near the beginning of the film. This scene is going to be roughly about 40 seconds long, so it's quite a lot going on here. And there are three characters in it. Yeah, I think it'll be, it'll be several weeks uh, working on this one. So we're working in a, a 2D animation programme called TV Paint. And so we're just drawing straight into the computer with a, with a stylus. Um, so every frame in this will actually be drawn by hand, uh, so even the, all the in-betweens. So it's really similar technique to traditional pencil and paper animation. I started about four years ago, my first Simon's Cat film. So I've been drawing a lot of cats in the meantime. <laughs> I just really like their movements. I always love drawing animals and they've sort of got, got their own language with their, the way their tails move, um, sort of their ears going back, they, they look around at things. So um, on this scene, I've just it's very roughly sort of started sketching out key poses, kind of based on the, the animatic. So I'm working as a uh, clean-up artist on um, Simon's Cat off to the vet film. And this particular scene I'm doing at the moment uh, was animated by Laura, which is quite rough. My job would be to uh, clean up the line work, so to finalise the line. And so you've got the rough uh, animation that's been done by Laura, and that is on a separate level. So all the characters are separated as well. That makes it easier when it comes to cleaning up. So you make the fine line over the rough animation. A steady hand is really important. <laughs> and it's not just a case of just cleaning up um, one drawing and then moving on to the next. Uh, you have to constantly flick in between the drawings to check that the animation is smooth and the lines aren't jumping. Also another important thing is actually getting the characters on model. You have model sheets, um, so it's very important that you stick to those as much as possible. I'd previously worked on the um, Simon's Cat shorter film called Butterflies. By the time I'd got onto this film, um, I'd become accustomed to characters and also the clean-up sort of conventions as well. Yeah, it's just been really great working um, with Simon's Cat. It's a really lovely team, it's a really lovely studio environment. Yeah, I, I love my job. <laughs> I'm Isabel and I'm the art director on Simon's Cat Off to the Vet. I was given the fantastic challenge of trying to apply colour to a Simon's Cat film for the first time. So it's been a long development process. We know how much the fans love the black and white Simon's Cat films. So we wanted to make sure that we stayed very true to the charm that is contained within those films and that was really Simon's key word throughout the development of the colour. One of the starting points for the colour development was Simon's Cat versus the World. This was Simon's first book in colour, so we knew that we already had a, a place to start. Early on in the project we started to put together some pages of development work so that we could um, understand how we were moving forward. We started to put together thumbnails of each shot and then as we progress you can see that there are different moods throughout the film. For each scene we drew a background 
and this, as you can see, is the kitchen. And in this scene, it allowed us to show the early morning light and it sets the time of day up beautifully. So Simon, he really loves wildlife and so using colour gave us the chance to add great detail to the birds in particular in the film. As we started to use colour we realised that there were so many exciting opportunities to tell the story in a more dynamic way. Using colour would allow us to greatly enhance the atmosphere and, and the mood throughout the film as well. We knew that adding colour to the film was going to add a lot more work, but we also knew that it was going to be worth it. Well, here I am. I've come to Macasso Sound Studios to record the voices for Off to the Vet. Now, that's something that's a little bit um, different about Simon's Cat is I like to do all the animation first and then we put the sound on after, which normally happens the other way around. People normally work to a soundtrack. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah, I've got that. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once we have um, a recording that we're all happy with, um, it's a case of going into the edit suite and taking the best performances from each take and marrying them up as best we can to the picture. That's good. One of the special challenges relating to this scene um, is the number of characters that we're having to deal with simultaneously. And of course, Simon um, is giving a vocal performance um, for each of the characters. So we have to make sure that not only does each individual character have their own voice and their own place, and that they're different and varied enough to stand out against one another. Simon records all the character voices that you hear in the film and we add all the other sounds to the picture. Like any film you have your different categories of sound, you have your atmos which is perhaps your background noises such as birds tweeting outside, you have your foley sound which is your characters moving around set, footsteps, body of movements, then you might also have things like action sounds where perhaps a vase has been broken on someone's head or you know forks and knives being thrown such as in Simon's cat we get to break and smash things and then really have fun with this. Where the cat's pulling Simon's eyelid, there's actually a bloom being stretched, you know, we can get more creative with how we make these sounds. <coughs> and as these pieces start to come together and gel, they start to lock into place and you get the final film. I'm Stuart Hancock. Uh, I am the composer of the music for Macasso uh, on Simon's Cat. And I've been working on the theme tune and the incidental music uh, for the whole film. <laughs> Music plays uh, quite a big role in, in the film. Uh, it helps carry the pace of the film nicely along and where it needs to, it can create the tension. And it's just supporting what's already there really, sort of enhancing and exaggerating a little bit the playfulness of the kitten and the play fights they have and the tension where the cat is fearing almost for his life that he's off to the vet. So yes, we've been working on themes and instruments for the characters. The main cat himself has a bassoon, is his main sound. Because it sort of has a cheeky vibe, but it's also a 
sort of serious side and a mellow side, and uh, we, we reckon that captured the cat very nicely. Simon himself has a bit of bass clarinet for his, uh, his movements and his moods. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're working on possibly doing glockenspiel for the kitten. <laughs> which will give him a cheeky edge and hopefully capture his spiky little movements uh, on the screen. Uh, with animation, particularly this one, uh, there's an element of it being a silent film as well because there's not a whole lot of dialogue, uh, so the music can, can work a little harder and, and help you along with the story. <laughs> But it's enormous fun to work on animation like this uh, and it's great to have worked with Simon for the first time and uh, looking forward to the premiere.